So we do this thing called CQ, which is like seeking you. And it's like, I'm looking for someone to talk to. Come find me. The point and reason, you know, if you want to go to the, some of the background and the reason of ham radio, is so this, which is connected to that wire, which is in a tree like two feet, I can talk to Europe. That's it. No infrastructure, no, there's some education requirement, but otherwise, like, it's completely just you set up and it, you can talk across the world, right? So that's part of some of the questions I'm sure you'll be asking you later, is like why ham radio is still super important, is because it requires zero infrastructure to get an extremely long distance. So I got into radio when I was 13 years old. I was uh, really, really wanted to be an airline pilot, and I wanted to learn all the stuff. And radio was one of them. Uh, I ended up going to Radio Shack and buying a CB radio and mounting that to a desk in my like bedroom and finding an antenna and power supply and all this other stuff, and turned it on. And I spoke on it once because. Terrified. There's this thing called Mike Fright where you're like super afraid. You do all the work, you get the licenses, and then you like can't speak when you key the mic. So I uh, I talked on it once. I could only hear half of a conversation. I only heard one per person talking, not the other person. I said hello, and then I got so afraid I turned it off. <laughs> Fast forward, uh, go get a new job, and in uh, class with my one of my buddies uh, for the new job, I uh, find out he's a ham radio operator, his dad is a ham radio operator, and like he encourages me to study and go through all this stuff so that we can actually, out, so that I can become a ham radio operator. And uh, started a little bit, again, just like didn't follow through, got busy with work, you know, with life, whatever else. Yeah, once again, they've got somebody shooting up here. So I decided, hey, now's a great time. Now that I have all this free time, we can't go out, we can't interact, we can't go, you know, do anything. I'll study for ham radio. So I studied for ham radio, got really, really into studying for it, learned a ton. And so I got my first license in 2019 around June, and I decided I really wanted to get all of the licenses as fast as I could so that it's almost like a license more to learn. Like once I get it, I'll figure out everything else afterwards. Uh, November whiskey one Sierra. So I do what I can, but what that's turned me into is a, a program called Parks on the Air, which is um, a ham radio, I say scheme, but not in a negative sense. It's just like a a method of using your radio and getting outside and exploring the outdoors. So you bring your radio, this setup, just like I have now, maybe a longer wire, but and you go to a national or state park and you can make contacts and it's part of those like you log them and you get a little certificate at the end that says, Congratulations, you've successfully activated this park. Oh, no we found you. Yeah. Yeah, I met these big fellows and then we built some camaraderie by whacking through the wood. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yep, we're at Blue Hills, 8402, 8402. Um, all, we're, all we're doing is exchanging uh, call signs, so like my call sign is Kilo Bravo 1, okay. Kingo Oscar Yankee, I copy their call sign, and then we send signal reports, and that's all that's required to confirm a contact, that we've established communication uh, between our two radios, and that's what counts for a point. This is Alpha Charlie 1, Juliet Romeo, in Park 8431. Roger, Roger. Uh, this is KB1TOY. I believe that's AC1JR. Oh, KB1TOY. Hello again. Uh, yeah, it is uh, Alpha Charlie 1, Juliet Romeo. We've talked a couple of times in the past. Culture. So the subculture of ham radio is similar. It's like, oh, you're on the radio? We're friends automatically. Just because you're also a ham radio operator. Thank you very much for 5 So now we're going to tune in to see if there's somebody in Puerto Rico. All right. Yeah? Yeah. I worked this guy last week. 
Did you? Yep. So yeah, it's uh, it's more than just talking. You know, it's it's it's, it's a friendship. It's a uh, exchange of ideas and, and knowledge. Um, not everybody is an electrical engineer that gets involved in this and is able to understand exactly what the heck's going on. Mm -hmm. So that's where you get people that may have that knowledge and they're more than happy to uh, to share it. In, in ham radio, those people are called Elmers. And anybody that kind of takes you under their wing or shows you something is an Elmer. That's funny. And, but if you help somebody do something, you're an Elmer. Activate the part. Uh, but then there's a, there's a website called pota.app. Quite a, uh, a range of personalities. This, you know, I think if you were to ask every ham radio operator, why did you get your, your ticket? That's what it's a nickname for the license. They'll give, you'll get here a different answer. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just want to talk to my friends. I, you know, my wife is also a ham, and we use it to communicate. Uh, uh, I like the technology. I want to try to develop different things and have fun tinkering around the workshop. Mm -hmm. There's so many different uh, things that you can do with it. To, to, to put it in perspective, as like as a young person in in uh, in growing up and in school, there's like the weird kids, and they you don't you don't hang around with those guys, right? Because they're weird. But in ham radio, the weird people are included. You, you, you don't you don't exclude anybody. Yeah, I love you know, that. If one of the weird guys showed up right now, you know, just behave. That's all. That's all we're asking. Just be civil, and you can be as weird as you want. You may learn something from them. So, you know. And then I would take the tower, and then I would get what the tower's worth. I would probably just set up and. So, oh, there is something on top.